Hi guys, my name is Laurie. I am so excited to be here with you today and share with you my very first project for the Robin Marie Smith design team. In this video, I will be showing you how I made this cute mixed media art doll named Beautiful. I have also made two other art dolls and I will be sharing those with you at the end of the video. So let's get started by first talking about the items I used to make my art doll. So the first thing I wanna tell you about is the Robin Marie Smith products that I used. And I have to tell you guys, when I got these in the mail, I was flabbergasted. These are gorgeous. They are even more gorgeous in person than, than online. So these are the art pop cards. This particular collection is called In the Garden. And I've used a couple already, so I don't have as many small ones left. But here's the large ones. Aren't they just gorgeous? I really had a hard time covering these. <laughs> I didn't want to put anything on them because they're just so beautiful the way they are. And today we're going to be using this one in the video. Isn't that pretty? It's just so pretty. We're going to be using some stickers and I have some round stickers and some of the other stickers I'll be using today are these arrows and then we have some straight strips of stickers. This particular one is called Wait For Me. The other thing I'm going to be using is some stamps. I have two stamp collections to choose from, both sold by Paperback Studios. One is a stamp sheet by Ray Missigman. Here's the other collection. It's called Garden Muse. And I love this collection too. If you look at these, when I looked at these, I saw a face, a head with hair, and I saw a lion with teeth. This one could be used inside of this one. So you can create things without using these as flowers. There's all kinds of things to let your imagination go. Just think outside the box. Open your mind and think of things differently than what they were intended to be used for. And that's kind of how these dolls came about. The other thing that I will be using today is some scrap, like fabric or trims or laces or whatever you've got on hand. And I have a little jar here that I just threw a few buttons in because I might use a couple buttons. It's a little bowl, not a jar. I've got some stamps here to stamp out my word beautiful, which is the name of the doll we're going to create today. And then this is the punch I was telling you about, scallop shape. And I'm going to use my crocodile to make the holes and set the eyelets. You don't have to use that. You can use brads or you can use another type of eyelet setter. I'm going to have some scissors on hand. I've got a couple of pens here. This is a black Le Pen permanent. And this one is my Jelly Roll Medium Ball Point White Pen by Sakura. And I've got some Stays on Black ink, permanent also. Here's the brads that I'm going to be using. It's just what I had on hand, so that's what we're going to choose from. And I've got some scrappy tape. It's like red tape or score tape. I will also be using some scrap paper that I've got from my old kit that I I wasn't going to make but I wanted to keep the paper and the other thing I want to use is some chipboard now this chipboard is very flexible it is not your thicker chipboard like that won't bend like a cardboard almost this is very flexible but it's sturdy enough to use as a backing or something to add stability to your item whatever you're making now that's the basic supplies that I will be using as we work, I might find that I need something else and I'll be reaching for that and then I'll just share with you what it is. I might need a few color pens. It just depends. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do a face on this next girl or not. If we do do a face, then I probably will need some color. So let's get started on the actual project and I hope you enjoy. So the first thing I did was I chose the art pop card that I wanted to use and I chose a paper from my scrapbook paper that's going to be the backing that kind of goes with the card. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the scrap of paper to the back of my card and I'm also going to take my stickers to create my arms and legs and I'm going to attach them to my chipboard and then attach the paper to the back so that the front looks like this and the back looks covered. So I'm going to start attaching the paper to the back of the card and one thing I didn't mention was that I might use a little bit of wet glue or I might use a little bit of glue stick because when I put my tape on the back of my card and attach my paper, I'm not going to cover the whole card completely. So I may want to add a little bit of glue in the spots that don't have tape just to give it a little extra security because I'd like to stay together. Okay, so let's get started. Hey guys, 
I'm just going to talk a little bit during the fast forward and explain a little bit about what I'm doing. I'm taking the double-sided tape and I'm putting it on the back of the art pop card, getting it prepared for backing. And this is just scrappy tape. It's like score tape or red tape, like I said in the video. This is the chipboard that I was explaining about. I'm going to take my stickers, the arrows, which are now arms and legs, and I'm going to place them on the chipboard. I'm using this chipboard as a form of stability between the paper and the sticker, just so it's a little less flexible. Although this chipboard is very flexible, it still adds a little bit of, of stiffness to it. You could use a heavyweight cardstock if you wanted to. Now I'm going to take the head, which is the circle sticker, and put it on the chipboard also. And I'm just cutting out a little bit around the images. I'm not cutting up to the edge of them yet because I'm going to back them first, then cut them out and save me a little bit of cutting time. I'm peeling the sticker off the back of the tape on the art card now, which is the body, and I'm putting a little bit of wet glue in the areas where there's no tape and spreading it around with my finger. And then I'm going to place it on top of the scrapbook paper, which is facing upside down right now. I'm just going to press it down and let it adhere to the paper and go on to the next step, which is the head. And like I said, I'm cutting up a little bit to the edge, but not on the edge. And I'm going to back the head with the tape. This is repetitive for all the parts, but you'll get the gist of it as I go along. I'm not going to show the full detail of every part because you'll get it. So after I put the glue on, I'm spreading it around my finger to spread it out some, putting it on the back of the scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to take the arrows and cut them apart from each other and cut off the excess chipboard. And now I'm figuring out where I want to place the arrows and how they'll fit on the paper. And same thing, I'm going to put tape on the back of each foot or leg, or both in this case, and then peel it off and stick it onto the scrapbook paper. And I'll have to use the other piece that's sitting off to the side because I don't have enough room for all the pieces on this piece of paper. And then after they're all down, I just cut them out and then I cut up right to the edge. And that way all the chipboard is, uh, you don't see the chipboard anymore and you don't see any edges that are raw. And once all of these are cut out, I'm going to place all the body parts down on the mat and just see how the body looks. Okay, so now you can see we have our body and we have our arms and legs and we have part of our head. Oops, we're too close. The next thing we need to do is we need a neck and you could attach it without a neck but I kind of like having a neck. This is what I did on this one and what I did was I just took a part of these sticker strips and I just cut a section and I created my own neck. So that's what we're going to do on this one. I use this area down here and I'll cut enough just to be sure that I have enough. And we're going to put it on top of our chipboard and cut it out and back it just like we did the other pieces. So this is going to be the same thing as we did with the body parts, with the arrows and the art pop card. Back it and put it on the chipboard and then put it on the scrapbook paper. And as an aside, I'm not wounded. My hands and arms just happen to be my new puppy's favorite toy in the house. So although it appears as though I've run through the, the bushes and the brambles and the stuff, I haven't. It's a puppy. So now you just decide, how do I want my neck shaped? Let's say I put her down here. What I want to do is just curve it in a little bit. Maybe I'll go this way. Let's just go this way and see what we think. That's fine. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but I actually cut a little bit bigger. So I cut on the outside of my sketch lines just to make my neck a little bit broader. I think that's work. that works just fine. Okay, so now we have a neck and a head and our arms and legs, like I showed you a minute ago. So the next thing we want to do is attach what we want to attach to our body, our extras. 
like our bits and pieces of paper and trim and things like that. And I sewed mine onto this card and I'll probably do it to this card too. And this is where some of the stamps are gonna come in. I liked a stamp in the background here, one of the flowers. So we're gonna stamp a few things and then we'll get to stitching our little bits and pieces on there. I've put down my non-stick craft mat so that I didn't get any ink on my, my paper here. On this particular stamp sheet, I'm going to use this one here, and I'll have it all listed below. This is a Natural Elements rubber stamp sheet, and so I've already got it cut out and ready to go. I've already used it, so we'll set that aside. And on this stamp sheet here, I'm going to use the same one as I did on this, this girl here, because I like the shape, and it leaves me options whether or not I want to do a face or not, so we'll use that one. But I want to show you real quick how the stamps come. They come in one sheet, all attached together, and you just cut around the stamp shape that you want. And then you can mount them with, uh, I think it's called cling foam or something like that. A lot of you already probably know what that is, but I did not mount mine, I probably won't. You just cut around the shapes and use them like this. And I also kept the edges. As you cut around, there's a border here, like right here. I don't know if you can see it very well in the camera. I kept those because they could be used also as stamps. So I want to show you that real quick. Okay, I want to show you what I chose for my, my papers for my stamping. For the face, I'm using a piece of scrap. I keep a little box when I'm working on projects and when I have leftover scraps of things that I like, I stick it in here and keep it with the big box of scraps. And this particular piece has text on it and for this stamp here, I'm going to use a piece of paper. I keep another box with deli paper, index cards, tags, this is newsprint, and I keep things like that where I put extra, like when I'm stenciling and I have extras, I wipe it off onto a paper. This is a stencil that I was cleaning off, and the back is done too. So I have a choice anytime I need something funky looking or just I want to choose from my papers, I have front and back to choose from. And on this one, I'm going to choose this little section right here. I had originally thought I might use this one, but I think it's got too much of the same coloring, and I want to go a little bit paler, so I think this is going to be good. We're going to start with this one first, the bigger stamp, and I'm just going to lay my stamp down flat like this and press really hard all the way around quite a few times. pick it up carefully and find my little spot lay it down and just press it down okay so there's our stamp and the green showing through there makes it look like it's smeared a little bit it's the green it's not a smeared stamp so we got a really good impression actually not too much in the flower I wanted a little bit showing through a little bit of the color showing through so I think that's really good okay so let's do the other one now I'm just going to make a stamp impression of the face, which is really a flower, but a face, but a flower, but a face. There we go. Good enough. Okay, so then I want to take my scissors and I'm going to cut these out. And I don't know about y'all, but I am not a fussy cutter. Fussy cutting is not my thing, but it's worth doing because it's really cute. So let's just fussy cut this out. So the next thing I want to do is I want to stamp my word onto a piece of muslin, which is just a cotton fabric, like this. Well, I just take a piece that I think will be long enough and I just tear it. You can cut it if you want to, but I like the torn look. I like the little frayed edges. So I think this will work just fine. Okay, going to stamp my word beautiful and I want to let you know in advance, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be straight lined or anything like that. I just want it to be where you can read it. B E A U T I F U L. Beautiful. Okay, we have our word beautiful stamped out. And as you can see, I kind of got the U a little close to the F. I don't care. It's fine. Don't stress about stuff like that. The next thing I want to do is take my art pop card, which I love so much. I got a few little bits and pieces of 
ribbons and trims. I've got my word beautiful here. I've got my stamped flower and I've got this little piece of deli printed paper if I wanted to use it. And what I want to do is decide how I want the card to be facing because I want some of the card to be seen so that it's not covered up. I think this section of the card is what I want to be seen. It's so pretty. And I want the green of this stamped image here to be on this side and then I'm going to fold it around to the back like that. Okay? And that's where my flower is going to go. And if you wanted to, you could glue these down. You don't have to sew. I just prefer to sew. I like the little strings and stuff hanging. If you wanted to tack it down with a little bit of glue before you sew it to make sure it stays in place, that's fine too. Um, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna wing it. So we've got our flower here. And let's just look at what we have. I'm just gonna go through the little bits and pieces I have that I showed you in the video, place them, see where I like them, see where I want to put them down before I stitch them. And like I said, I just kinda go by the seat of my pants and just whatever looks good. You know, the other ones I kind of wrapped it around like this and made it like a little tag on the side. So maybe I'll do that on this one. It'll be a little bit bigger. Or I could, I left enough room up top here, I could stitch it here. Let's move this over a little bit could stitch it here and let it just hang this way and this would be tucked underneath there you can see it I think I like that I think that's what we're gonna do so that's what I'm gonna do so that all you do next is just layer your little pieces however you want and glue them down or stitch them when I come back you'll see the stitch lines okay and there's this little piece here I kind of want to tuck in there somewhere I don't know how but I'll figure it out over there and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've got so this is what it looks like now and I really kind of wanted to incorporate some of this Clooney lace here. So I'm going to save it aside because we might use it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the holes to attach my arms and legs. You can use brads, make a hole and stick a brad through and that make you know easier if you don't want to set eyelets. And what I want to do is just figure out where I want my legs and put them in the back. So kind of like this and then my arms when you put your trim and stuff on the side you want to make sure and leave enough space to put your hole unless your fabric and your trim is thin enough to put your your eyelet through which this one was but sometimes it gets a little tight back there in the back so make sure you leave enough space and it's not too bulky so now I'm going to place my arms and my legs in different places and see where I like them and then mark with a pencil where I'm going to punch my hole and I guess it's probably a good thing I wasn't put in charge of designing bodies because we'd all be walking around with arrows for feet <laughs> I just had such a good time making her she was so much fun and here's the legs I'm putting the holes there in the center a little bit further down from the edge that's the crocodile and there's two sides to the crocodile. The side I use to punch my holes is the 1 8 inch side. And if you don't want to use eyelets, you can use brads. Just make your little holes with an awl or a pokey tool or whatever it is you have. And just stick your brad through to attach your arms and legs. You could even glue your arms and legs on if you wanted to, if you wanted to avoid making the holes all together. I like the way the eyelets look. I like the finished look on the front and back, but I think the brads would look just fine too. And I also think gluing would be just fine. It's really up to you how easy you want to make it. However you choose to make your doll, the main thing is just have fun. Just have a good time. Now you need your little eyelets. Then decide if you want your arm on top or bottom. I put them on the bottom because I think I wanted to make sure and left, leave this clear so you could see it. So now I'm going to set the eyelets and as I said I'm going to put the arms and legs behind the body and these eyelets are 1 8 inch so they fit into the hole. We use the 1 8 inch size on the crocodile so they fit fine. They are kind of tiny but it's it's doable and it's not too hard. So just take your time and you can get them placed pretty easy. So we've got our arms and legs on. Now we're gonna work on the neck and the head. Now you just decide where you want your neck. 
and how you want your head angled. And I think I'm gonna angle my head a little bit that way, uh, opposite from the way the arrow is pointing, even though this arrow is pointing down. This one's kind of like pointing out. And I kind of want her head to be this way, as if she's leaning back and pointing, hey, that way. And I put my mat back down because I'm using glue. So I've got it here. I think that's where I want it. And just decide how you want your head angled, what part you want seen, what part you don't want seen. So I'm gonna mark right here across my neck. And that's where I want my glue line to be. Now I'm just going to add a little wet glue and glue the pieces together and let it set. And we're gonna let that dry for a second. While that's drying, you can position this piece here, your headpiece behind your neck where you want it. And I'm gonna sandwich the neck in between these two pieces. And I'm just gonna put a little glue back there. Put my neck on top. Kind of rub it around so the glue goes in different areas. So while we're waiting on the head and the neck to dry, now you decide if you want color on your flower head. And I do want color on mine, but I still don't know if I'm going to make a face. I'll decide that in a few minutes. If I want a face or if I'm going to make it like a flower with a button, like a, like a Black Eyed Susan or something like that you know, with the little center in, the, in there. I haven't decided that, but I do want the outside edges here to be colored. So I just have two pencils here. They're just color pencils and it's by Stabilo. And I'm just gonna color in these areas here. And I'm not coloring into the fullest because I'm putting two colors in. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of each color and then wherever there's open space, after I get done with this color, I'll come in with my other yellow. The one's orange, one's yellow. And I'm not being neat and staying in the lines. I'm going over the black. You can take a black pen and go over your stamp some more if you'd like to. I don't. My philosophy is make it fun and easy and stress-free and perfect it doesn't live here. Thank goodness. And then just blending in this color on top. And we are going to come in with a white pen and bring out our little dots again because I do want the dots to stand out. I'm finishing up the coloring around the edges here. And I'm going to use my Sharpie. This is a Sharpie poster paint pen. This one's a water-based. I'm just going to bring in a dot in the center where that little black dot is. Ooh, see that big smudge dot that happened? Our neck and our head are dry enough now to put our flower face on. I made a decision while I was off camera waiting for this to dry that I was going to go ahead and put a face on it. And to save a little time, I sketched out a face, but I am going to trace over it with my black Le Pen, which is permanent and it's very fine tipped. So I'm also adding hair to the top of her head. So I'm just gonna sketch around the lines that I already drew for her face. Uh, faces are not my thing, but I think she turned out pretty cute. I like how the hair looks too. And then I'm gonna use these metallic jelly roll pens. I've got two colors of green and a reddish color. And these are just two uh, crystal pens. They're called Crystal by Bic that are red and pink. So that might be the mouth, I'm not sure. I'm just going to color in her eyes and her lips with the Jelly Roll pen and the Bic pens that I showed you. I did wind up using Jelly Roll and Bic on her lips. The Jelly Roll was the darker color and the Bic was the light pink. They kind of blended together, but you can tell a little bit of difference close up. And just finish making her eye color. I'm gonna take some Distress Ink by Ranger and it's called Worn Lipstick. And just a little dauber that I've got. You can use a Q-tip or your finger, whatever you wanna use. And I'm just going to make her cheeks by kind of just pushing down there. I did not add any eyelashes to the other doll. One of them I did, one of them I didn't, but I think we'll add some to this one. And I'm just going to add a few little long streaks there. 
different different sizes. Probably a good thing I wasn't in charge of eyelashes too. <laughs> I actually like how they turned out. Little white dots. Her eyes are mostly black, but there is a little green showing through. Now I'm gonna let this dry a few seconds and then we're gonna attach the, the face to the doll. Our face is just about ready to go on to the head, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. I kind of want some of this fiber added because I just really love fiber. So I thought what I'd do is I would take some of this and wrap it around here and tie it and then hang it and glue it right there. I want the length to be about like that. So I'm gonna cut it twice. I want a double fold. Okay, so just kind of gauge how much you think you want. So my piece is probably, I don't know, 18 inches long, approximately, and then I fold it in half. And I'm gonna take my little piece of, this is just a piece of scrap, just an inch and a half long, and I'm going to bunch it up in the center and wrap my ribbon around, or my yarn around it. And tie it in a knot. I'm not sure what this fiber is called. It might be called eyelash fiber. I'm not real sure, but it's real stringy and tying a knot does take a little bit of time, but it's doable if you just take your time and be careful. And you get a lot of leftover stuff when you trim it too. Hmm. Oh, you know what? It looks kind of cute right there. I think I want it down here because it just is too much up here, but I still want something there. And I'm actually gonna take the side that has the knots and make that the outside. So the part I'm gluing is the flat side that you'd normally show. Like it would normally go like that. But I'm gonna turn it over and go like that. Because I want that knot to show. Just, I don't know, something about it makes me happy. And then I'm gonna trim off some of it because I don't want so much of it. Oh yeah, I love that. So now that that's done, I have to decide about my little section up here. And I could put this little piece of scrap there, but so-so. Mm, I could put a button. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and glue our head on finally. I did not back my head with any other paper. I did on the other one, but it's really not necessary, so this one I did not. I'm just adding tape to the back of the head and then I'm going to take the Elmer's glue stick and just go around the edges where there's no tape and glue her on. Okay, I did decide on something for her neck, but before I do that, I have decided to go ahead and distress the edges of her a little bit. And I'm gonna use the Distress Ink by Ranger called Black Soot. And the reason I didn't do it before I assembled her is because I originally didn't plan to do this one that way, but now that she's put together, I kind of just decided I want to. If you decide for yourself that you want to make one and you want to distress your edges, it is easier to do it before you put them together. But if you're like me, you kind of fly by the seat of your pants and <laughs> and at some point you say, oh, I, I really think I do want to do that. And you've already gone like 40 steps into it and you think, oh, well, I'll just go around it. That's just how I work. All right, so that's done. So now I decided against a big button. I could go with a big button. I could even put it there, and I just may, you know, I may go a little step further. <laughs> I just keep adding to her, don't I? Um, I'm gonna take this little flower and glue it on. The glue I'm using is just the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue. I'm gonna go back to these circle stickers here, and I'm gonna pick one. This is where my punch comes in, and it's just a scallop punch. I'm just going to make a little scallop shape to go on the back of her head. I think we'll use this one. And if your scallop, if your punch doesn't fit on the circle properly on the page, just pick your sticker up and move it closer to the edge someplace where you can peel it back up again, and then try again. And that works a little better. You gotta peel it apart. I'm just gonna put that back here. And you always wanna sign your work. So put your name somewhere in the year you've created it. 
or the date, whatever you want to put. You could go ahead and add more back here, like I could add some of this, but I'm not going to. And on the front, her feet, on this one, I added little strings as if they were shoestrings, but I decided not to on this one because there's a lot of fiber going on here and you really don't even notice the feet too much because you're busy looking right here. So we're gonna let that go. The last thing we wanna do is add the ribbon to the top of her head and I am going to use an eyelet to string it through. So we're going to attach another eyelet up here at the top of her head. I'm just gonna kinda gauge where I think I want it. Kinda centered body up the center right there looks good. So we'll go right there. I'm using the crocodile again and going to make my holds. Again, the same size as the other holes, the 1 8 inch side. And I'm putting the eyelet in and pressing it open with the eyelet presser, with the portion of the crocodile that you press eyelets open. I don't know what it's called. And then just running through a piece of the ribbon so that she looks like a tag. You can put her on a journal, in a journal, you can hang her if you want to, make the loop instead of a, it being open, make it a loop so you can hang her, whatever you wanna do. Our little art doll is done now, and I need to decide, do I wanna add this button here? Do I really? I think no. You know, one way to determine if you like something a lot is to take pictures. I didn't bring my phone off, I need to go get my phone to take pictures now, but um, set your item down, take a picture like this, take it off, take a picture, and then when you look on your phone and you look at the pictures, switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you get an idea if you like it or not. So, I think I like it. I think I like it. I think I want to do it. Okay, so I'm going to use a big glob of glue so it will stick on there pretty good. And just stick it right in the center of that. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so there we go. Your little art doll is complete. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a ball making her. I enjoyed making all three. So I'm going to set them all out now for you to look at. So here is beautiful. Here is brave. And here is bold. I really enjoyed spending time with you and I appreciate that you took the time to, to spend with me today. And I look forward to seeing you again on my next project. And I hope you check out all the other design team members as their projects come along because I've been watching them and they are fabulous. I feel so happy and honored to be a part of this team. And I thank Robin Marie Smith for giving me the opportunity. And I thank all of you for joining us today. So y'all have a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.